Alright, so we're just trying to do some HDR testing in terms of recording. I'm trying to create a, a footage that, that looks good, saturates properly, looks real, looks accurate. That's what we're seeing on screen. Alright, so I've been playing with the, the Fluid Motion 2 technology and the Fluid Motion 2 relies on FSR or it will make use of FSR technologies for their predictive information and if it's programmed for at the top level with support from the game company the ability to do or to aid with, with vector plotting or predictive information that helps knowing actually what's needed in the frame ahead to help with your predictive frame generation is an advantage that computers can have over TV frame generation. So that's the direction things are going in. Fluid Motion 2 is amazing. And what, what I found in the few days of testing where I believed 100% that any game using fluid frames as long as the 99th percentile or 1% low, as long as it held higher than 30 frames the experience was just perfect. And that's not entirely true. I actually found then some titles that that didn't hold up in. And they were titles that didn't have the FSR. So the more you, you could see that the company had either come from a console route or were in the AMD uh, application programming interface ecosystem where they were making use of the, the tools that were available to them, the functionality of fluid motion frames is just fantastic. And as long as you can get that 30 frames a second in your 1% in your lows always, brute forcing that, then it's pretty hard for whatever visual issues it creates un under gameplay I haven't noticed them I can run around for hours and not really notice them so long as the 1% lows are above that now in this game they're not uh, this is actually a really hard game to render so that's why I'm rendering it but I just wanted to get some I guess some colorful footage just get a feel for the different zones in this game I've only got about five minutes of recording time so I just wanted to talk a little bit while I'm doing this about the uh, the technologies at play. So fluid motion frames is absolutely fantastic. It's a game changer for me. Uh, for example, right now I'm on a controller. Normally I would have to play this game on a mouse. If I was playing 30 frames locked, brute forcing it, um, so I, I've been, I'm running my resolution so much higher than I've ever run it. All the advantages that have come with fluid motion frames. Now there are occasional moments where it slows down, but uh, I, I choose that for a game that's this pretty and uh, not 100% combat. So. With The Witcher, I absolutely need it above 60. I need it to be absolutely smooth because of the, just the fluidity of the combat being a little bit different. Uh, all right, so fluid, fluid motion frames is a win. It, it's changed up quite a few games for me. Uh, if they are FSR and lean on those technologies, they're even better. Uh, look, with regards to FSR technologies, I've actually found, yesterday I was, I was looking at The Witcher and any time there was upscaling involved, the rain over the ring mail just wasn't rendering very well, not for the resolution I was running it at. And so what I noticed was that if I just brute forced the, the raw resolution and, and didn't have it do any assistive anti-aliasing, with the games that were aware of the motion fluidity, of mo fluid motion frames too, you could actually get a perfect frame, such to the point where the subtlest of renderings at, at really high resolution was coming through and it, it, nothing was obscured. You were get, getting what felt like every frame's a new frame, styles a generation. And so long as I could hit the 1% low above 30, with the exception of high contrast backgrounds alternating with the character and, and just panning the camera around, only on the controller could I get a visual glitch. If I was using a mouse, the frame would move based on my direction so quickly that there wasn't a chance to spot uh, a misrender or a half rendered frame like you just didn't get any idea that you weren't running it at 60 frames or higher uh, so I'm just running to notoriously hard to render spots in this game generally where the frame rate will drop but also just uh, for, for some of the, the colors the lighting uh, just checking my EV graph on the back of the camera as we're recording. This is just a proof of concept test, but while, while I can talk about fluid motion frames, I certainly will. Look, uh, with regards to high dynamic range, HDR televisions, 
or gaming in HDR, what I've noticed with ray tracing and, and running all the titles in the last week with all the effects absolutely cranked now due to fluid motion frames like The Witcher etc, the effect for example in Ghost, Go, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, the ray tracing was very hard to make sense of what was happening on the screen. With all the settings set to Ultra and actually seeing what the developers had written artistically, when you looked at the screen, making sense of what was before you was... It, it wasn't a better experience necessarily. You could tell that technically your computer was doing something better. But once you put it in HDR mode, it all just came together. And I noticed that with Hogwarts, was that once the brightness range was able to be rendered into, you could see that the real real benefits of ray tracing happen when you can simulate massive differences in brightness and let your eye fall across the screen naturally such that shadows feel like subtle shadows and that all bright sources, brightness sources have an, an appropriate light level behind them. So HDR, I'd say it's no point mucking around with ray tracing if you haven't got like a really good HDR set, like a proper zero nit brightness capable running up to a thousand nit brightness uh, lumens and, and sustained with maybe a five percent window at, at higher than 800 nits or something silly you know like a proper hdr 10 as, as the standard was five or seven years ago when it came out um get, getting one of the the capable sets would make a difference so yeah look with regards to ray tracing too um now that i can play this game at much much higher resolution than i've ever been able to Seeing the pixels of ray traced information, for example, light bouncing along the edge of a, a frame for a painting, the extra resolution makes such a difference in terms of visual fidelity and a lack of noise. So definitely, I don't, I don't really feel that cards are ready for proper ray tracing. I think the traditional techniques are probably the way to go. If you are going to muck around with ray tracing, make sure you've got a proper HDR set so you can 